Hi there. I had known about the San Nazaire raid from reading military history um, for many years, but it, it really was when Jeremy Clarkson made a documentary about the raid, which he called the greatest raid of all time, that I really uh, understood just uh, the amount of um, daring, the amount of planning and the amount of bravery that went in to the operation. And uh, it, it's certainly one of my favorite documentaries and Clarkson brings a, a real degree of enthusiasm and awe to the subject. Uh, and I've put a link to that documentary and I really urge you to watch it. Uh, but recently a book has been written about the raid, which is called The Greatest Raid. And it's um, highly detailed and uh, it's the book I want to talk about today. Uh, when I picked it up in Waterstones uh, to uh, leaf through it, uh, I was struck by a mistake almost straight away that uh, he uh, attributes Fairbairn and Sykes to having served with the Hong Kong police rather than the Shanghai police. Doesn't give you a lot of faith in his research when you get mistakes like that. However, uh, I must admit that the rest of the book does seem to be um, uh, very accurate. So it happened in 1942 and really uh, it came from uh, the fear that Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister, had about the Tirpitz. The Tirpitz really was a tremendous threat to the Atlantic convoys and uh, she was holed up in the uh, Norwegian fjord, but uh, was expected to uh, sail free at any time and wreak havoc. And Churchill, uh, being uh, formally um, in charge of the Admiralty, uh, was very um, conscious of this. And the biggest dry dock in Europe was at San Nazaire. It was called the Normandy dock uh, in honour of the great liner that uh, used to use it. It was one of the uh, transatlantic liners like the Queen Mary and um, the uh, the other famous li luxury liners of, of, of the time that used to um, ply that trade before air travel became famous and the Normandy was uh, a massive big liner. So this dry dock uh, in San Nazaire was um, an important uh, port for the Tirpitz had it ever came out of Norway. So the plan was to sail up the Loire River, with a tremendous distance, and uh, attack the Normandy uh, dock gate. And the way this was done, and the planning was done by combined operations under uh, Mountbatten, was to ram uh, a destroyer called HMS Campbelltown, former American ship, um, into the dock gates. And the destroyer would be, uh, the hold would be filled with explosives with a delayed fuse. And then um, a couple of hours later, it would blow and the dock gates would be totally demolished. The delay was to give the um, guys time to escape. Now, uh, they, what they did was alter, uh, the, the Camel Town was a four uh, funnel ship and they altered it, took two of the funnels off and made it look like a German ship. Uh, tried to fool the defences which were um, quite formidable. There were an escorting flotilla of 12 motor torpedo boats which were carrying, uh, apart from weapons, uh, Orlok and Cannon, they uh, had complements of commandos aboard, as did the Campbelltown. And the idea was the commandos would then fan out into the port and um, blow certain um, components of the fort, the winding gear, the pump house, and, and so on, um, to cause further damage to the port's facilities. Um, one, one feature was that San Nazaire was uh, one of the major bases for the U-boats and they had the U-boat pen, pens there 
and the Germans um, uh, were very, very conscious of uh, uh, the potential uh, target of the Ubo pen. So San Jose was quite a heavily defended uh, area. And the plan didn't involve attacking the Ubo pens, mainly because you couldn't demolish them anyway. They're still there now. They're, they're so massive. Uh, but the commandos would attack various targets. And the planning was very, very good, and the training. The uh, commandos were led by uh, Charles Newman, Colonel Newman, and they did a lot of training, both up in Scotland, and the demolition teams trained on um, dedicated Dockland targets, so they could literally find their way blindfold uh, in, into various areas uh, and lay the charges. Uh, the naval uh, operation was under the uh, leadership of Commander Robert Ryder and he, he was a, a character in of himself. He had once spent uh, four days clinging to a card table in the ocean waiting to be rescued uh, when his ship was hit. Uh, so he, he was a very tough character and um, a very able officer. Um, one of the uh, things that went slightly wrong was that there was a diversionary air, air raid planned, but the RAF uh, chain of command uh, caused delays and, and information didn't get through. In the event, the air, a small air raid did take place, but wasn't of enough significance really to affect the raid one way or the other. Anyway, the raid went ahead, the Campbelltown hit the dock gates, the commandos went into the town and uh, massive fighting took place and uh, some of the uh, flotilla of the motor torpedo boats were sunk by the, the heavy fire coming from, amongst other things, some of the anti-aircraft uh, guns, uh, which were uh, 88 mil, depressed to fire uh, in a ground roll. And so they were quite formidable weapons. And uh, a couple of boats did manage to escape, but there was a lot, a lot of uh, casualties. And likewise with the commandos who were ashore, they uh, suffered uh, quite significant losses as well. Um, and in the event, um, the survivors were rounded up and taken prisoner. And while they were waiting um, for the Germans to sort of cart them off, the uh, Campbelltown, which had been, um, the Germans had swarmed all over it, and some of them have ta taken their girlfriends and wives aboard <clears throat> looking for uh, drink and uh, rations and cakes and things thinking that it'd be well stocked when it blew and uh, there was a tremendous loss of German life and the uh, Normandy dock gate was demolished aim was accomplished the amazing thing was the Germans seeing their comrades blown up didn't uh, overreact and take any retribution and some, some of the surviving British commandos and naval personnel fully expected to be shot out of hand and they, they weren't, they were treated very well um, probably because it wasn't, there wasn't an SS presence they hadn't been rounded up by the SS it was um, mainly uh, well it was some German army, German navy and some Luftwaffe personnel had captured them. One of the guys captured was one of the commando officers, Mickey Byrne. Now, tremendously interesting character, Mickey Byrne. Um, before the war, he'd actually been uh, something of a Nazi, and he'd actually met Hitler. Uh, those of you who watched um, the last series of Peaky Blinders, I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent, would remember that there was an Oswald Mosley um, plot and um, uh, she, uh, Diane Mitford was um, his uh, mistress and she was a big fan of Hitler. Well, she was one of uh, several sisters 
and another set of Unity Mitford and Mickey Burns had gone together to Nuremberg and had met Hitler, actually talked to him. Um, but then, uh, this was in the 30s, later on he, um, he changed, he actually started going the other way, more towards um, communism, um, you know, from one dictator to the other. Um, but, also before the war, he had had an affair with a Dutch um, woman, a baroness, called Ellen van Heerstra, who um, was living in Arnhem. And the prisoners uh, taken at Saint Nazaire were filmed by the German newsreel and it was shown throughout the occupied countries. And she's watching this on the news in Arnhem, and she sees and recognises Mickey Byrne. So uh, she knows the owner of the cinema and persuades him to cut uh, some frames from the film and uh, smuggles them so that uh, Mickey Byrne's family would would find out that he was alive and he hadn't been killed. And um, she also started um, a correspondence with him and after the war, he, he wrote to her and, and he was so grateful that she'd done this. And he said, is there anything I can do for you? And she had a, a daughter who was a young teenager who was suffering from several illnesses, uh, potentially fatal. And she said, um, if you can send me cigarettes, I can uh, swap them on the black market for antibiotic, well, penicillin, and uh, perhaps my daughter will survive. So Mickey Byrne sent her a whole load of cigarettes she was able to get the medicines, her daughter survived, and later on they both moved to America. Her daughter changed her name and was Audrey Hepburn. So I thought that was a really amazing story. And, uh, you know, Mickey Ben was just one of the fascinating characters in the book. Uh, so Charles Newman w was a um, prisoner of war and... Um, he was awarded the Victoria Cross and the uh, German uh, commanding officer of the camp, who was a, f a, a retired admiral, um, broke the news to the guys and, and was very pleased with the decoration um, as one um, soldier to another. Uh, Robert Ryder uh, was also given the VC, but he was um, quite... Uh, a modest guy and he didn't really like all the publicity etc that uh, it attracted he, he just wanted to leave a, a quiet life get on with the war and then get on with the peace um, but there was one chap uh, Thomas Durant one of the commandos and a German officer sought out a Colonel Newman in the camp uh, made a journey specially to meet him and recommended him for the Victoria Cross. Said, I've never seen such bravery. And in the event, it was passed through and Thomas Durant was aw awarded the Victoria Cross, unfortunately, posthumously. So the book, which, which as I mentioned, is highly detailed, it's almost a minute-by-minute -minute account uh, of all aspects of the raid, including the Ger German side, um, goes on to talk about the results of the raid, uh, the prestige it gave to Mountbatten, and it allowed him to uh, mount other raids, which were not as successful. In fact, the Dieppe raid was a disaster. Um, but it, it gave, um, gave him a lot of international prominence, including in America. Uh, one of the things uh, that's mentioned is, is the fact that Notionally, the raid could have accomplished its aims with just the Campbelltown, without the 12 motor torpedo boats. Uh, okay, they wouldn't have blown up um, the, dock uh, the dock port installations, but they would have taken out the Normandy, which was the whole object of the exercise. Uh, lots of food for thought. Um, great book, very detailed. And as I say, please do watch the documentary. Uh, it's it's a it's a fitting salute to some 
incredibly brave men uh, who many of whom gave their life uh, for their country and for us.